Hi students, welcome to English 111. I am Mrs. Dupree and I'm really excited to be teaching with you um, and learning from you as well this semester. Um, bear with me, we have a lot of information to cover over this little informational video. Um, I'm going to be talking about the course, I'm going to be talking about how to na navigate Whiteboard, I'm going to be showing you some different sites and things on the Gaston website that I believe will be helpful for you. So just kind of bear with me, um, but please know all of this information is vitally important for your success in this course. We're going to be going over the syllabus, we're going to be going over our course schedule, and we're really going to talk about the ins and outs of Blackboard that I think you'll find really, really helpful. So hang tight, make sure that you are taking notes and you can always reference this video if things pop up through the semester and you have different questions. But I want to start out by just welcoming you to the course. Um, I don't know exactly where you are in writing. I don't know what courses that you've had before. But this semester in English 111, we're really going to talk about the writing process. And I'm going to dive into that a bit more in the next video. But the writing process is really about helping you get from point A to point D in your paper. So from reading the actual assignment that I give you until submission. And I'm hopeful that we can give you some tools and some tips to bring some different ideas together so that you're confident when you're writing an academic essay, no matter what it's for, whether it's for this class or a history class or anything that you're going to be writing in the future. And the thing that's so important to remember about writing is it's not just an academic skill. You're going to be using writing no matter what you do in life, whether you're typing up an email at your job or whether you're speaking to a college professor one day or whether you're emailing your boss or you're emailing colleagues or you're even a parent and you're emailing a teacher about one of your children. So it's really important that we talk about writing in a holistic way and really help you gain some confidence with those communication and writing skills. So a little bit about me. Um, uh, my name is obviously Mrs. Dupree. Um, I have been at Gaston now for about three years and I've been full time for two. Um, I'm actually from this area. I graduated from West Lincoln High School. So if any of you are West Lincoln people, um, I always love seeing those students in my class. And then I went to North Carolina State University and did my four years of undergrad there. And then I got married um, a couple weeks after I graduated from college and my husband and I were a military family. He was in service in the army and I worked on my graduate degree while he was in service and was really fortunate to receive a couple master's degrees. I have one from ECU that's in English and literature and then I have an MBA from Wayland Baptist University. So that's just a little bit about my educational background. Um, we lived a little bit of everywhere. We lived in North Carolina, we lived in Virginia, we lived in Hawaii for about three years. And so I really got to travel and do some fun things with my husband and our now children. Um, but then when he got out of the service, we decided we wanted to move back to this area. So we now live in Cherubal. So we are a local family and I get to teach at Gaston and he works in the area as well. So I'm really excited to be serving this area and these students um, and just really passionate about uh, this part of North Carolina. So if any of you are from this area, I hope to see you around and bump into you. Um, it's always fun seeing my students outside of class. And as far as um, this course goes, I think the best thing to do is I'm going to be sharing my screen a lot through this informational video to kind of walk you through really the ins and outs of this course. Um, and it'll also help you as you begin using Blackboard, just navigating uh, what that looks like for you as a student. So I'm going to start here at the Gaston page. And uh, first thing that you should probably know is right here under Quick Links, there's a student section under here and you have a Viso Blackboard, um, you have access to email. It's really, really important that you learn how to use your student email. I really do not communicate with students um, on their personal emails because a lot of times we're discussing sensitive things like grades or your classroom performance. And those are things that I don't like to use on your personal account because 
I don't know who has access to that account. So just to be on the safe side, I really try um, to make sure that we are communicating um, in, in, in a way that the college approves of, which is your student email. So I'm also, I'm gonna take you to Blackboard. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about what that communication actually looks like for you. So um, I'm sure you can see my blackboard at this point. So, um, and granted, if you are in any of my English 111 courses, all my courses look like this. So I want you to know that even if this isn't your particular section, your course will be structured and you'll navigate it the very same way. So first things first, um, every single week, I put out a weekly announcement. Um, and so when you start class this semester, this is one of the very first things you'll see. Um, and I do these every single week as we open up the week. And it just kind of recaps what we talked about. It opens up what we're gonna be discussing that week. And then just anything that I think is important to communicate to you guys, that's kind of the time that I try to do that. I really try hard to only send one of those a week. Um, if something's super important, then of course, uh, I'll communicate it that way. But I really try to avoid spamming um, your email accounts. And then um, right here is my faculty information. And you'll click on that. And this has everything that you kind of need to know as far as my phone number, um, my email address, and then what times that you can best reach me. Um, I do give y'all my personal telephone number. Um, I've done that since I started teaching. It's worked really, really well for my online students, especially because we don't have that opportunity for that face-to-face -face interaction. I respond to phone calls and I do respond to text messages. So you're allowed to do either one. The only thing I will not communicate over a text message about is your grades. That is something you have to email me about. So if you're questioning a grade or if you're unsure of where you stand in the class, send me an email um, because for FERPA reasons, I do not text about, uh, about that kind of information. Um, I will respond between 7.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. That is when I'm committed to responding to your emails or your text messages. After 4 p.m., that's really my family time that I commit to my family. And I, uh, I may not pick up a phone call. I may not send a text message back until the next day. So if you're trying to contact me, those are the best hours to reach me but you can always be uh, just rest assured that you will hear from me within a day. Um, I, I like to think I'm a pretty good communicator. I'm a pretty fast communicator, uh, but I am working from home and I do have two children. So that's just something to keep in mind that if you text within those hours, you're probably more likely to hear from me really quickly. Um, I also am great with doing Zoom. If you like face-to-face -face interaction and you want me to look at your paper or you want to share a screen, um, that's a really great way to communicate that I have found students believe is really, really helpful, especially in light of the pandemic and everything that's been going on. Um, on the weekends, I will check my email at least one time on Saturday. I never know what that looks like because um, I do have a family and a lot of times we're out visiting people or doing things. And so it might be Saturday morning, it might be Saturday night. Um, so again, it's really vital that you try to reach me between Monday and Friday. Um, and then on Sundays, that is the one day that I do not check email. I will not be responding to phone calls. Um, that's a day that I reserve for my day off. So I um, just want you to kind of know the ins and outs of those communication lines so that you kind of understand where, when, and how is best to reach me. And again, my email's right here underneath the picture. My phone number is right below that. I do have an office, but right now we are completely remote, so I will only be working from home. And then my office hours are right down here. And just to reiterate, students, I make myself very available to you. You are welcome to text, call, email me, or set up a time to Zoom conference. It's always best for you to make an appointment. Um, one thing I do wanna emphasize is if you are planning ahead, it's so much easier for us to communicate about your assignments. 
Um, if you have a paper due that night, it's probably not best practice to be emailing me at four o'clock that day. There's a chance that I may not respond um, because that's the end of my technical work day. Um, and also you need to give yourself ample enough time to make sure that you can get your questions answered um, and that you can really do well on the assignment. So that's just a little bit about communication and how you and I can best communicate this semester. And then as far as navigating Blackboard, I just kind of want to go through some ins and outs of how this course is going to run each semester. So if we go to weekly assignments, and I'm going to make sure that that's where you guys are looking at right now. So if we go to weekly assignments each week, you will have a weekly folder. So you can see I've already set up the folder for your week one. Um, this is the most reliable information for the course. It's the most up to date. It's what I put up that week. Um, and what I do is I have all the objectives that we're going to cover that week. So the things in your syllabus, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, that I think are really important that we emphasize that week. And then your due dates are also that week as well. Um, typically, your work is going to be due on Wednesdays and Sunday nights. I really, I hate to make due dates on the weekends, but for online courses, because I do have so many students that have commitments from Monday to Friday, for some, um, they need that extra couple days in the weekend. So a lot of my due dates are on Sunday evenings but you have the assignment by Monday morning at the latest. So it gives you some real flexibility, just how to plan your week and how to go about um, making sure that you have enough time for your assignments. And you will see that each week I have each assignment listed with the date and the time that it is due. All of your assignments are due at 11.59 p.m. That will never change. The only exception to that is the final exam is due at four o'clock. Um, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about the course schedule. But everything else is always due at 11.59, so right before midnight. Um, and then if you look into this week, each week, um, and right now I don't have this lecture, of course, I, I will do these weekly lectures and these weekly little check-ins where I create a video just like the one I'm doing now, and that will be embedded into this once I finish it. Um, but each week you'll have some notes, you'll have some embedded lectures, you will have reading materials that I ask you to read at the end of those weekly lectures and videos, and then you will have all of your assignments placed right below the lecture. I try to keep everything in weekly folders so that you don't struggle trying to find the ins and outs of where your assignments are at, where do I turn this in at, one thing that's really important for you to know, I do not accept work over email. I do everything in Blackboard. I keep everything in Blackboard. It's a really easy way for you and I to make sure that you're submitting your work. Um, so it's really important that you learn how to use Blackboard and how to attach a document. So if those are things that you've never done before, if you need extra help, I'll be more than happy to walk you through that process. But as you can see, like for the very first week, you're gonna have a syllabus agreement where you say that you've read the syllabus and we're actually gonna go over that in this video as well. And all it is is a little true false question that you've read it, you're committed to the course, and then you have a discussion board. And one thing that I think is really important to note, um, all discussion boards for all courses are different. For my particular class, you have to click on the discussion board and you have to actually click create a thread. And then you'll see that I have the questions listed there. Um, I always have the due date of your initial response. So your response to the questions, as well as your responses to your course mates. Typically, you will have an initial response due on Wednesday and your responses to your course mates will be on Sunday. Um, and of course, both of those are at 1159 p.m. And then I also have word counts. Your answer, your initial answer should be a minimum of 250 words. And then your responses to your course mates should be 100 words. So again, um, it's, it's just so important that as you are opening these weekly folders, I would strongly recommend that you take a time each Monday morning, open the weekly folder, see what you have due that week, and that'll really help your planning process as far as just knowing um, how much time to give yourself for assignments, 
what those assignments are asking you to do, if you're going to have to do any research for those assignments. Um, week by week, there's some weeks that are heavier than others. That's just how the course works. One week, you might have a, a entire rough draft due. Another week, you might just have a simple assignment. Um, and that's why I say it's so important that you open that on Monday morning so that you can properly plan for the rest of the week. So then if we leave your discussion board forum and we go back to this weekly folder that I talked about, then you see you have just a small assignment right below the discussion board, um, the writing process reflection. And again, as you can see, all the instructions are there. And then when you click on the assignment, this is where you will submit the assignment. Um, you'll attach it um, at, as noted. One thing that is extremely important that I run into and it's an issue every single semester you must, you must, you must use Microsoft Word. I do not accept work in PDF. I don't accept work in text edit. I don't accept work um, just typed out in the box on Blackboard. You have to use Word documents and you must attach it as a doc. Um, the reason I'm so adamant about that, um, the computer that I have at home is compatible with Word and you're given Word for free by the college. And I'm gonna walk you through, um, if you didn't know that you have access to that, I'm gonna show you where you can find that. But Word um, across every computer works. It's one of the most compatible software systems for submitting work. And so if you do submit an assignment that's not in Word, I will give you a zero and I will send you an email saying, hey, I really need you to submit this in Word. Um, another reason I do that is because the way that Blackboard works for me to leave you adequate feedback so that you can really understand what you did wrong or the corrections you need to make, um, Word is one of the only software systems that it will allow me to really do that, to create notes inside of the assignment. Um, so it's really, really important that at the beginning of the semester, you go ahead and download that and get familiar with it. Discussion boards, I let you use the discussion board boxes. That's what makes the most sense for those assignments. But for, um, for assignments such as this writing process reflection, you must use Microsoft Word. And I even note that in your assignments and I'll continue to note that in your assignments until um, you get confident in, in knowing how the course works. And then below that, you'll see your readings for that week. Um, if it comes from your everyday writer, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, um, then you have to go look up the pages. Unfortunately, there's no way, Blackboard doesn't have a system yet where I can just insert it into, um, into the weekly folders, but if it's from the Bedford guide, all you have to do is click on it and you're immediately uh, taken to the, um, the chapter that I want you to read for that week. So this is just an example of what a weekly folder looks like. It is my most consistent practice. You will have access to this every Monday morning by 8 a.m. A lot of times I will even open it the Friday before so that for those of you that wanna get a little bit ahead that weekend or maybe it's spring break and you have a trip plan and you want an extra couple of days to go ahead and work on your assignments, that way it kind of gives you an edge to be able to do that. Um, but you will definitely, of course there are times when I don't get it open on a Friday, um, you will definitely have access to it by Monday morning at 8 a.m. And then the course runs from Monday to Sunday each week. So um, that essentially you will begin working in the weekly folder that Monday and you will be finished with it by Sunday night at 11.59 or before if you choose to work ahead and do your work ahead of time. So now I wanna take you to course readings and materials. What this folder is for is for the extra supplemental readings um, that I, that I give you as a part of um, as a part of my course. So for example, we're going to talk a lot about MLA format. Um, there's a folder that has a lot of information that's really helpful. Um, for your major writing assignments, your major essays, your major rubrics that you need, I keep those in this section so that you can constantly refer back to them. And that way you're not going, oh gosh, did she put that in my week one folder or did she put that in my week three folder? This just gives you a very simple folder to go to and access where those handouts are. So if you click on that, and right now um, your two of the essays are hidden because we're not going to be working on those yet, but like your first essay is already open and available for you. Um, and you'll have access to that anytime you need it as we're working um, 
on that particular essay. And then portfolio information instructions, that's your final exam. You'll have access to that closer to the end of the course. But this is also the place where if I say, hey, uh, we're really struggling with comma splices, check out the extra supplemental materials that I've placed in your folder for you to read and YouTube videos, some things that I think will be helpful for you guys. This is the section that those will be placed in. So again, these are not your textbooks. These are extra supplemental materials that I've created that I think you will find helpful. Then if you go to ebooks and materials, this is where your textbooks are. And the great thing about this course uh, that I'm so appreciative of, you do not have to buy a textbook. Um, they are already in your Blackboard page. You're welcome to go buy them at the bookstore if you'd like to, but it's really not necessary for this course. Um, they're very easy and accessible. Like I said, the Bedford guide, anything that I'm asking y'all to read will already be embedded in your weekly assignments. But for the everyday writer, you will have to click on that and open the actual pages that I've asked you to read in your weekly lectures or in these videos that I create. So just be on the lookout. And typically at the bottom of the lecture notes, like I showed you in your weekly folder, I will say, read this chapter, read this page um, with this particular textbook. And then of course you have discussion board. You're welcome to go to the discussion board to look for it, but I do embed it in your weekly folder so that you never miss it. So um, it really, you could go without ever clicking on this section because it will already be in your weekly folder. And then one thing, um, I do not use Blackboard messages. I only use email. So if you do need to ask me a question and you don't want to text or call me, you're welcome to email me, but I don't use anything through Blackboard. So just make sure that you're using your student email account to ensure uh, that I'm getting the message. So we've gone over um, your course info, your weekly folders, how to find due dates, extra reading materials, your eBooks. Um, the next thing that I want to do is just briefly go over our syllabus. And I'm also going to depend on you that you are going to do this on your own as well. Um, so I'm going to enlarge that. Okay. So we're going to go over some of the brief main points of this syllabus. And then again, um, I'm going to ask you on your own time to really dive into it and make sure um, that you get all the information that you need. So again, this is English 111. Um, here's my contact information. Um, I give you my availability times Monday through Friday. And then I tell you that I will check my email at least once on a Saturday, but I never know what time that's going to look like. Um, so the best, uh, best case scenario for reaching me quickly is Monday through Friday from that 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. timeline. Um, I will respond within 24 hours unless it's a Sunday. Um, so even if it's 9 p.m. on a Friday night and you're emailing me, I will get back to you sometime on that Saturday. Sunday is the one day that I do reserve for my family. Um, and so I'll get, get back to you on Monday morning. Um, this is the course description. Um, the course is designed to develop the abil ability to produce clear writing in a variety of genres and formats using the recursive process. Emphasis includes inquiry, analysis, effective use of rhetorical strategies, thesis development, audience awareness, and revision. Upon completion, students should be able to produce unified, coherent, well-developed essays using standard written English. So that's our goal. Your goal is to be able to write in the recursive process when this is all said and done. These are the general education competencies and the learning outcomes. These learning outcomes are what I said will be on your weekly folder every week so that you can just kind of look, okay, this is what we're reiterating each week um, as we go through the course. And this is a three credit hour course. This course format is completely online. We will not have any face-to-face -face interaction. There will be no face-to-face -face delivery. There will be no face-to-face -face office hours, unfortunately. Um, everything will be online. Everything can be done through Zoom, through phone call, and um, however you're most comfortable communicating. Um, and I really do try to be flexible to whatever works best for you as a student. In Blackboard, you will access online lessons, course materials, and additional resources. Your activities can consist of readings, discussion forums, email essays, reflections, Zoom, and other online activities. 
Um, your textbooks and course materials, we've gone over that in Blackboard. Your technology requirements, this is really important. You must have an internet connection. Um, however you can get one, whether it's through your school, through your home, you've got to have a reliable connection, especially because I do use a lot of supplemental videos and I create lectures such as this. Um, it's just really important that you make sure that you do have a reliable internet source. Um, Microsoft Office 365, this is what I was hitting home on. And I'm going to show you at the end of this video where you can access that for free. But you must, must, must have Microsoft Word. Um, Chromebooks and other mobile devices, this is really um, important. A lot of my students have Chromebook. Chromebook does cause an issue for Blackboard. I don't know why I'm not tech savvy enough to give you that answer, but there's a lot of things with Word and with Blackboard that are not compatible with Chromebook. So if you have one, of course you can use it, but make sure that you have access to another computer for certain, um, certain assignments that you'll need to do. Um, I noticed last semester students struggled with MLA format sometimes when using Chromebook or they couldn't see uh, the notes that I was leaving them in review. And then when they got on another computer, they could see them. So just know if you have Chromebook and something doesn't look right or something isn't uh, popping up the way you want it to, there's a really good chance it's because of the Chromebook. Um, most browsers, Chrome, Safari, and Firework, Firefox work with Blackboard. I will tell you Chrome is what I have seen uh, work the best. We will not be using Respondus in this course, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, the next thing that's important to talk about, class attendance and participation. The instructional work of the college is designed for class participation and attendance. The responsibility for class participation and attendance is placed specifically on the student. Official college requirements are based on a 90% participation rate. Therefore, if a student has failed to participate in 10% or more of the class, they will be withdrawn or assigned an F after the withdrawal date. For students violating participation requirements after the published withdrawal date, a grade of an F may be assigned by the instructor. Once an instructor has posted the grade, the student no longer has the option to withdraw from that class. Please see the student handbook for more information. Guys, I'm just gonna kind of sum this up in a nutshell. Um, if you do not turn in work, I count that as abs absenteeism. So if you don't submit any assignments, that's seven days that you've quote unquote missed the class. Um, I, after two weeks, um, if I can see that you're not participating, um, I will send you an email and say, hey, if I don't hear back from you this week, then I'm going to withdraw you from the course. Um, at that point in time, uh, once you've missed a couple weeks of this course, it's really impossible for you to catch up. Um, and so it doesn't create success for you. Um, and it's just not best practice for you as far as getting what you need out of this class. So just know that if you choose to not participate um, after a couple weeks, I will withdraw you. If it's after the withdrawal date, which we'll discuss in a minute, then you'll receive an F for the course. Class policy. If you neglect to turn in a major assignment and you do not communicate with me, then I will remove you from the course. This includes, this includes your major writing assignments. So for this syllabus, I have a, a couple different assignments. Essentially, these are your major three essays. This is going to be your, um, your personal narrative essay, your compare and contrast essay, your argumentative essay, or your portfolio. If you do not submit those, you cannot pass this class. It's impossible because those writing assignments carry such a heavy weight for your grade. And you can't do the final exam for this class if you don't do the first three essays. So uh, if you miss a homework assignment, a discussion board, it's okay. It's not gonna be the end of the world. But if you do miss a major writing assignment and you haven't communicated with me, I'll automatically withdraw you because at that point, you cannot pass, it's impossible. Gaston College expects students to participate in all instructional activities. Online courses are no different from the classroom. However, participation must be defined in a different way. And that's what we discussed earlier. Tardiness policy, this is really, really important. I do not accept late homework. I don't take late discussion boards. I don't take late assignments. I don't take late homework for any reason whatsoever. 
unless it is a medical reason. If you've been diagnosed with COVID, if someone in your family has been diagnosed with COVID, if you had to go to the ER, um, then yes, I will wiggle around that, of course, and be more than happy to work with you. However, if you just forgot, or if it was just, uh, you just had a bad week, I just don't accept it. And the reason why is because our homework assignments build on one another to create the big essay that you get at the end of every three weeks. So if you missed an outline, if you miss a brainstorming session, it makes no sense to go back and do that because you're already moving forward to something else that you need to create that assignment. So I do not accept any late homework. The only thing I do take late are your major essays. So those things I was talking about earlier, the narrative, the compare and contrast, the argumentative, the portfolio, actually the portfolio do not take late. Um, but those three major essays, I allow up to three days late. Um, but for every day that you turn it in late, you get deducted a full letter grade. So for example, um, if you turn it in two days late, you start at an 80 and that's before any deductions that I make. After three days, you receive a zero and you're withdrawn from the course. The withdrawal process, any student who has not participated in a class for 21 consecutive days will be withdrawn by the instructor through the 70% point noted by a withdrawal grade. After the 70% uh, percentage, a grade of an F will be assigned. I don't even wait 21 days because within 21 days, we've done a major essay. Um, and at that point, you can't pass the course. And so if I know you can't pass and it's before the withdrawal date, I just go ahead and withdraw you on my own. The last day to withdraw from this class is April 22nd, 2021. It is so important you write that date down. Um, at that point in time, we can withdraw you. It won't affect your GPA and your transcript. But after that date, you have to receive an F if you're not doing well in the course. So it's really important that you remember that date. Evaluations, um, here are the things that you're gonna be evaluated on for the course. Lecture reflections, reading reflections, final portfolio, homework, and major essays. As I shared with you earlier, the major essays are worth 40% of your grade. So that's a pretty big weighted component, which is why it's so important that you submit those things. Everything else, your homework's 30%, so it still carries a lot, but there's a ton of homework assignments um, within the semester. Um, and then the rest, they're pretty small scale. Um, but again, all of those points add up. So this is just important for you to know and reference back to during the semester. Makeup policy, we've already talked about that as far as what I will accept and what I will not accept. Viewing grades, this is really important too. Um, I grade homework every week. I'm pretty quick and up to date. With grades, the only thing I do ask is on your major essays, your final submissions, it can take up to 10 days. I give you really, really detailed feedback in those so that you understand why you made the grade that you do. And so I just ask you to be a little patient. Um, I teach over 100 students, and so I'm critiquing over 100 essays, and I want to make sure that you understand why you got the grade that you got. And then course outline and schedule. I'm going to show you that after we finish the syllabus. And then your final exam is going to be due on May 6th at 4 p.m. That is actually not an exam. It's a portfolio. It's an essay. And we're going to talk about that later on during the semester. And then other important information. Um, please know it is my greatest desire to see you succeed in this course. However, that requires consistent and constant communication on both of our parts. I'm always willing to help those who want to help themselves. If you are struggling with a concept, please email me early and we can set up a Zoom conference to help you better understand the material. This is a college course, which means I have collegiate expectations. That means when you signed up for this course, you chose to make this course a priority. I stand by my syllabus, so please understand I do not accept excuses that ask me to lose the integrity of this document. If you have COVID-19, please email student services immediately. And then I've listed the email there. It's vpstudentaffairs at gaston.edu. This will allow the most effective communication line for all of us. And I will be more than willing to work with your case and situation. However, it must be documented by the school. Um, guys, this is really important. If you tell me you have COVID-19, 
I don't have as much flexibility to give you an incomplete, to extend your deadlines, to work with you endlessly. But if you submit this to the school, then you are completely protected. And we have all the wiggle room in the world to work with you. So the sooner you know that you have symptoms or that you're testing or whatever you've been exposed, whatever the situation is, please make sure that you are directly emailing um, that email account so that we can work together on that. I look forward to working with each and every one of you. This is my joy and my passion. I love to see my students thrive through learning. And I truly believe that the work you do in the classroom is paving the way for your success in other areas of your life. Let's make this a great semester. And then just a few other things that I wanna make sure that we hit on. Um, FERPA, that's your Privacy Act. Um, this is important for my high school students. I cannot speak to your parents about your grades. Um, if I get a call from your parent or if I get an email from your parent, I have to ignore it. And then I have to contact you and say, hey, if you want me to be able to communicate with your parent, I need you to go to the college and fill out a FERPA form. Um, so just know that, that is, that's a federal law. That's something that I have to abide by. I can speak to your high school guidance counselor, but I cannot speak to your parents about your grades or where you stand in the course. And then your rights and responsibilities. On the first day of class, I will give you a syllabus, which is what I'm doing right now, um, that class sessions will start and end on time. That means that I'm giving you your weekly folders in an adequate manner, um, that your assignments will be graded with constructive feedback and returned in a timely manner, that you will use text and course materials that are in your syllabus and they will adhere to the college outcomes. And then here are my rights. Um, or the rights that you have from me, that you will read the syllabus and ask for clarification, um, that you will come to class and that you will turn in your assignments, that you will wait if I'm running a little bit late. Um, we are not meeting face-to-face, -face, so that won't be as much of an issue for most of you. And that you will submit assignments that have been completed independently and on time, and that will, you will use your text and course materials. Early alert, guys, this is uh, your aviso. I do use a visa when I see that students are struggling. And if I think that there's someone that can help you like a counselor or our learning services or our tutoring sessions, um, I do send alerts to those people so that you can get the extra help that you need. And then uh, just behavior. Uh, I'm just gonna go over this very briefly because this is an online course. So I don't run into this as often. But one thing that I do want to reiterate is over the discussion boards, I do ask that you really uh, just acknowledge that you're speaking to other students, that you need to ensure that you're using language that's appropriate when speaking to your peers. Um, it's okay to disagree on things. It's okay to have a difference of opinion. Um, I think that's actually the classroom's a wonderful space to do that in, but just make sure that you're doing that in a respectful way. And then academic dishonesty, um, plagiarism. Uh, I'm, I do have a zero tolerance policy with plagiarism. If you do plagiarize, um, you'll receive a zero on the assignment. I will not allow you to redo it. Um, and then I immediately send this to uh, my department chair to inform him what's going on. And then I allow the college to handle it from that point in time. Um, again, and I said this earlier on, this is a college class, so I have college expectations. So if I see that you're using someone else's work or that you copy and pasted something off the internet. Um, the thing about Blackboard is SafeAssign tells me that. It immediately sends me an alert that something came from a website or that two students' papers look too much alike. Um, so I'm just going to trust that we're not going to have to deal with that or have any of those issues this semester. And then academic uh, complaints procedure. Um, all that I ask is that if you have an issue with your grade or an issue with a course, you come to me and hopefully that's something that we can talk about and clear up. But if it's not, then you also uh, have the opportunity to contact my department chair or the Dean of Arts and Sciences and their, um, their lines are right there. Um, I have never run into this before. Typically any questions that students have, it's something that we can solve really easily just with communicating with one another. And then the ADA statement, if you have any disabilities that require me to give you more time, 
um, that would allow me to figure out a way to help you more in the class that would uh, that would provide you with information that would be helpful. This is the phone number that you need to call and you need to get that on file with the college so that I can make sure that I'm doing everything uh, possible to give you the best learning experience that you can have. And then these are just campus safety and security and emergency preparedness. Again, I don't think we're going to need this this semester as we're going to be mostly online. And that is it for, um, for the syllabus. And I want to briefly go over the course schedule. And again, while this is kind of a brief overview and it gives you just an opportunity to look at your major assignments, um, it is really important that you remember that the, the most accurate due dates are going to be the ones that are located on that weekly folder that I showed you earlier. So if you go to your course schedule, you will see here that we have a week by week little kind of a roadmap for the course. And then your major assignments, not every assignment, not your discussion boards, um, a lot of your reflections I don't have on here, but some of your more major things I have bolded. Um, for example, your final essay one submission is gonna be at the end of February. Um, your rough drafts, and I do have some discussion boards on here. Um, your final essay two. So I try to give you an overview so that you can kind of see like, Ooh, I was planning on going on a trip this week. I need to see if Mr. Pre can give me this work a little early just so you can plan. Um, but again, the most accurate due dates are going to be on those weekly folders. And then I just want to emphasize this students, while I do my best to adhere to the schedule in place, there are times when life happens and adjustments must be made. Please know if I make schedule changes, it is for your success. If this must happen, I will make an announcement and I will up load an updated schedule with new due dates and notes. Please note that your most of your homework is due on Wednesday and Sundays. However, there are times when your work will be due on a Friday to ensure I have adequate time to give you feedback before a major deadline. I would encourage you to keep the schedule printed out or to make notes in your calendar so you can keep up with dates. All discussion boards typically require a response. However, occasionally there will be notes that say no response required. Unless you see this notation, you can assume that a response is due by the end of that week at Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Each discussion board will have instructions that indicate what you will need to do that particular week. Read them thoroughly. Make it an academic habit to glance through your weekly folder on Monday mornings. By glancing through that weekly folder, skimming through the discussion board, you will be able to plan how much time you need for your weekly assignments. Some weeks are heavier than others. I do not want to catch you off guard if your discussion board requires a lot more work that particular week. So get in the habit of creating a plan of action each Monday morning. This will help you be more successful and create less stress throughout the course. And I do want to show you, if you go to your Blackboard page, right here under course information, that is where you will find your syllabus, your schedule, and course requirements. So those two documents that I just went over, that's where you can find those two attached. And then the very last thing that I, uh, that I do want to show you is uh, this page gaston.edu slash writing center. Um, the writing center is a great resource and tool as you're working on your papers and if you get down rough drafts, this is just a great uh, resource. Uh, Chris Thurley, one of our professors in the English department runs and operates our writing center. They do a wonderful job over there. Um, they are completely operating online this term, but you can request an appointment um, and you can uh, communicate with them to help you work on some of those skill sets um, that will improve your papers. I will say my students that use the Writing Center, they perform better in my class just overall and in general. So I want to make sure that you have that phone number. Um, it's 704-922-2369, but the best way to contact them is either through their email which is writingcenter at gaston.edu or to request an appointment. Um, again, I, I just strongly encourage that you make this a habit, not just in my course, but for the remainder of your courses. And then uh, just one more thing. Um, 
I want to talk about Microsoft Office so that you know where to go. So right here, as you can see, this is my home email account, um, your Office 365. And then right here in the top right corner, um, you're going to see, and this is in the Outlook app, you're going to see where it says Install Office. You click on that, and then you click right here, the Office 365 apps. This will allow you to download Word, Excel, and PowerPoint onto your computer. Um, while you can use the online version, a lot of times when students go to save it, it saves in a really strange format. So I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you download it to your computer so that you can just click on the app on your computer and use it that way. And again, it's really important that you remember that uh, I don't accept work that is not in Word. So I would do this as quickly as possible. As soon as you watch this lecture, go ahead and just uh, do that so that you have it um, on hand. Okay, and guys, I think that that kind of covers everything. I'm sure there's going to be questions pop up um, as you begin navigating Blackboard and as you realize that you do have questions um, about how the class is going to operate or how we can communicate or um, just some different entities that come up throughout the semester. But I think I've covered the basics that can help you get started. Um, so the great thing is you have my email, you have my phone number. Um, you're always welcome to reach out. Uh, I really enjoy getting to talk to you and I enjoy hearing from you. Um, so please use those communication lines. Um, I really look forward to working with you this semester and I, uh, and I hope that, um, that you feel comfortable as we begin um, and just are ready to work hard and learn a lot. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and let's make it a great semester.